What's up everybody, Cryptic Coding here, welcome back to another game development video. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how you guys can create an endless game, endless runner game from scratch. So without further ado, let's get started. Before I start anything, I want to ask you, I want to actually explain to you some of the concepts there, here and there. So in the previous videos of mine, I made sure that every single node, every single uh object in the game have uh, in one scene so everything or uh, every object is in the one scene now this is a terrible terrible programming practice so be because i cannot reproduce anything so if i have like two uh players right of player two enemies i have to go each every one individual of them and then change their thing there okay that's the thing and it it messes up the code i understand now that it messes up this it messes so much okay so in this video in this c series i mean i will try to make sure that as much as it ethically i mean as much um what is the right word um as much as good as possible okay that's the thing i don't know the right word to say as much as uh, as good away yeah as much as good away as possible okay so enough of this introduction let's get started so we'll create the world scene first so let's create the world goddamn world needs some world save this thing i got a world scene so everything will be happening here but but for now we'll be adding a player scene so let's click on a new scene here and then click on other node kinematic body 2d there you go hopefully the audio is fine so player it's my like 18th recording collision shape so player with a collision shape it's a basic structure and we'll be getting like we'll be sticking to main 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 structures. I mean, com simple structures. So let's click on the icon here. Drag and drop your goddamn icon to the texture. Click on this thing. Let's zoom in. Click on the shape. Click on the rectangle and just like this. Save and save it as a player scene. I think it's a little bit like this. Yeah, this one is nice. Now let's go back. Let's go back here. Click on this button. This will instance the player scene to this scene. So as you can see, we got our player scene. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now we need to. Now I'm gonna explain why I need another scene for this goddamn player because I could have done this here. The reason is if I have like, bam, two two players. For some reason, I have more. I have three players, right? So. Oh god, okay, there you go. So, three players. Now, if I want to change something, for example, the color of the player. So, I'm going to go here, click on the sprite, click on the visibility, and then change. And then save. As you can see, it got back. It, 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 we got three players with the same color. Now, this is the main uh, benefit of this, actually, technique. The reason is that if you create another uh instance of that object and then change everything here then go back to them and as you can see we got back our stuff so anything you change here will be applied to the object so this is the object and this is something like a prototype or a class or something if you know object oriented programming and this is the object of this so we got as you can see change so if i change anything here it will be automatically changed over here so i, I don't need, i don't need to repeat my stuff so this is basically it. So let's go back and make it less enemy-like, less and more player-like. So let's go back here. As you can see, we got our world nice and set up. So let's delete this too because we don't need this. We have our player. Now, now let's first to think about what, what we will be coding. So what, what I have to do is add a speed like this. Okay. Then I need a force. I need a force that will be going as a, as a burst of movement. It will go up, up like this. If I hit the up arrow and down arrow, like down, down like this, like down, down. Okay. This, this is what I want to accomplish right now. So for this, uh, now after you think a little bit, you have to understand that it, it will take like two variables for now is the up speed, uh, which is this speed and down speed like that. And we got the, uh, the player speed. So player move, moving right speed. So yeah, this is what, what I need so far. Now let's go back to the, the script file. But before that, click on this button and let's add the script. Click on new script, player to GD, let's create. 
So let's get started. First, what do we have? What do we have did we what we did for understanding the so far? We need two things. So five in var player speed. Okay. So export means I want to edit this in the world. So if I save and then go back to the world, and as you can see, player player uh Player speed pops up here. So this is basically the power of export. Int because it will be a whole number. So I want speed to be a whole number. You can add float if you want. I'm sorry if you can hear the goddamn plane noise. So man, every time I want to record. <laughs> so uh, let's just go back to here. Make it int a whole value and up for up speed. So up speed, up speed. And save as you can see the up speed got pops up. Now another variable because I want to move. So if you know that in Godot, if you want to move, there is a motion vector. So far motion equals to a vector two. Because it's a 2D game. If we're making a 3D game, it's vector three. Okay. Let's remove all of this stuff. And let's add our physics process. Actually, the physics process loop. So what the heck is this? Physics process loop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. What is physics process loop? Okay. Physics process is a process file. It's a loop that runs every single physics frame of the game. So it will make your uh, movement more consistent. So every time you want to move something, make sure it is in physics process, not the process function. Okay. So let's add. Now let's think. So it will, will be going to left to right like this. So how am I going to do that? First, we need to handle it. So how am I going to handle it? We need to take input vector. There is no need for it, but for organizing purposes, I'm going to do that. And input vectors x-axis, because we're going to move to the left and right side, now will be equals to input vector dot x plus layer Speed. Now, equal, and as you can see, we are just adding the x value to the. Okay. We are adding to the x's value to the player speed. So, whatever the x is, like for example, this in right here, it will be adding player speed amount, so like that. Okay. So, next, and to the shorthand of this is just cut this thing out like this and just add a plus equals to this and bam. This is basically it. Now, every movement we have did is in the flare vector, uh, input vector. Now we need to add this to the motion vector. So motion equals to input vector. Okay. Now the motion vector equals to the input vector. Now we can actually move. How am I going to move? So if you know to move, to move first, you need to write motion equals to move and slide. Move and slide motion. This is a really most common way to move in Godot. I mean, one of the common ways. So now if I go back and then change, the, click on the player and then change the player speed variable, like for example, 300 and then run, select to the word scene. Boom, as you can see, our player indeed now moves. Now, what do you want to add now? We'll be adding a, uh, a up, up, like up pulse, something like that, I forgot. Okay, so let's just pop this thing down a little bit because every single movement, every single movement should be calculated at the at the end. So every single movement you do must be before this line of code. If you do that after this line of code, it will not work no matter how hard you tried. If you did, this is one of the common mistakes I do. Okay, so now let's add the m movement code. To move, it's simply, if input dot is action just pressed UI underscore up because of the up arrow, now we need to move. How am I going to move? Motion dot Y because I want to move up. Now, in mathematics, if you want to move up, just remember that there is a grid here, just a grid. How am I going to show a grid? There you go, grid. But this is not the type of grid. The, the, I'll, I'll, I'll be like showing uh, like a picture or something. Uh, so 
this is just a grid like this. So it's an, this, this is the y axis and this is the x axis, right? If you want to move to, and th th this part is zero. If you want to move to the x axis like this, you, like you plus it. If you want to move to the this axis and opposite, it's, uh, you minus it. In y axis, you plus it and a y minus. If you want to go down, you minus it. Now, in game development, the y axis is reversed. Just remember this y axis is re 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 reversed. Why? Think of it just like a gravity. The more the gravity is, I and mean, the more the, uh, the y value is, it will fall down and the more the the less the y value is it will go up so this is basically it this is not that much of a thing to actually understand so let's just just this is the goddamn grid here you can click on this this is the magnetic grid and just save this and enough of this explanation let's just code so if i want to move up so minus equals to up speed okay now we just need to do the same for down. Okay, after you do all of this, now what you need to do is just let's understand a little bit of what the heck the UI up came from and the down came from. So let's go to project, project settings, input map. And then let's go down and as you can see UI up is over here. UI up, it, it activates when you press the up arrow and you are down activates when you press the down arrow. And if you're using a controller, you, the, you, the button will be this D-pad up key and D-pad down key. Okay. Hopefully it makes it, you can bind your own arrows if you want. Now let's go back here and then play. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because I know what the heck I did wrong. It's the up speed. Let's add a 7,000 because I want to move really, really up. So as you can see, it works nicely, right? So this is what I wanted. Thank you guys for watching. We'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.